I wanted, um, I'm an insomniac, uh, which means that, again, for those of you who didn't know what effigy meant either, um, insomniac is someone who doesn't sleep at night. I am an insomniac, I can't sleep, I can never bring myself to go to sleep, and I figure, you know, I'm going to use this night time. Every day I figure before, you know, I can't sleep, let me use this time to do something constructive with my life. So I figure, you know, this time around, I'm going to write a book, or I'm going to, like, pen a sonnet, or, or do a drawing, or do something worthwhile. I said I spend every night just downloading pornography. <laughs> every night, that's all I do. And I realize that's why there are no great inventions coming out anymore. <laughs> Everything great that had to happen happened a century ago. Relativity, electricity, everything. It all happened before the advent of pornography. It had to, because now it's too distracting. It can't happen anymore. You would have had Einstein, for example, sitting there going, E is equal to MC, ooh, Arya Giovanni. <laughs> or, all right, people know who she is. <laughs> um, you have Shakespeare, you would have gotten none of Shakespeare's plays, because all Shakespeare's plays, you would have been to be or not to be. Ooh, Black Sound Blondes. <laughs> Othello would have been a totally different play at that point, by the way. Um, <laughs> But that's what women don't get. Women always ask men, why do you watch so much porn? You know, why can't you get into pornography? It's because every single porn is individual. <laughs> every single porn is unique. They are like perfectly formed snowflakes. All of them, unique and individual snowflakes. I like to call them smut flakes. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm doing in my life anymore. <laughs> The thing I don't understand is the, uh, the extremist fundamentalist religious parties, the MMA, for example. Why do they hate women so much? It makes no sense. It's, it's reflected in every one of their policies. All of the MMA hates women. And you, ca you can't figure it out. It, it's just holding all of this country back. It's holding this entire like, movement towards democracy and progress back. And I couldn't understand it. I really wanted to understand I want to get in their heads because to understand the enemy is to know the enemy. And then one day, I saw all of these people on, the, uh, on television at some press conference. All the MMA leaders were on, on television. These are the ugliest group of men <laughs> God has ever deigned to create. <laughs> I mean, they're absolutely hideous. One guy had teeth that were horizontal. I'm not lying, his teeth were at a 90 degree angle to his face. If he tried kissing you, he'd scrape your cheek off. <laughs> the other guy looked like the product of an illicit union between a hobgoblin and a troll <laughs> that happened to be first cousins at the time. And that's why they hate you women. You guys won't ask, go out with them. Every time they ask you out, you reject them. No wonder there's such hatred. They figure, you know, that's why they're all suicide bombers. That's why they, they'll figure, I might as well try up there. I'm not getting any down here, blow myself off. What the hell? That's why they will always, they'll always leave the heads behind. Every time there's suicide bombing, you'll find the guy's face behind. That's because you know, it makes sense. It's like, that's the one thing that's been holding me back. I'm better off without it. No, I'm not advocating that women start sleeping with the members of the MMA. But you have to admit, it'd make a damn interesting NGO <laughs> charter. Um, in, uh, one of the major ad agencies in Pakistan, it's an international ad agency, has now opened up a branch in Kabul, Afghanistan. You know, because that's a market that's starved for choice. The UN care aid packages are the best aid packages there. And what could you possibly sell there? And then the worst part is that they will try, because all ad agencies try this, they will try to restructure the ad to fit the local market. So it'll be like Gillette, the best a man can get before getting his head cut off for aping Western <laughs> lifestyles. Or Telenor, the smart call to set off your smart bomb. <laughs> the only way, the only way I can see Pakistani advertising, sorry, Western advertising working in a Kabul environment is if they advertise effigies. Uh, and if, what are effigies, you ask? I wish you'd gotten a better education, I respond. Uh, effigies are basically straw figures really life-size that the Muslims pull out whenever anyone says that we're a violent people, and we pull them out and burn them to show how non-violent people suffering we are. It's a great way to make a point across. Debating is not a strong point. 
Um, but yeah, so the FEG is the only way that I see us actually, you know, having advertising in Afghanistan. And I've actually written the ad for the FEG market over there. And let's, let me just tell you what it is. Does the fire inside you burn? Do you want to burn things on the outside and express yourself in flame? Then come on down to FEG Hut. That's right, to FEG Hut, where you can buy two for the price of one FEG. That's right, double the combustible mother. And now you can avail a special group discount and get enough FEGs to let your hatred of Western nations be seen from space. That's right. And now, for a limited time only, you can buy one Salman Rushdie FEG free with every purchase. That's right, one Salman Rushdie FEG free with every purchase. Tamam FEGs, but you can have to do the case. I want to change tactics just a little bit. Um, bear with me here. I want to talk about something serious now. I, um, it's, it's, uh, it's one of these things. I, I touch on some topics which are ridiculous and bizarre. And then I try touching on some topics which are kind of taboo, maybe sometimes. Just because there's a lot of stuff that goes on. And it's unsaid. And, and things that need to be said never get said. And I really want to try changing that culture here. Um, one of the things I want to talk about, and I'm serious about this, is child molestation. It happens in Pakistan. I was sitting with a bunch of friends recently, and there's eight of us. And we all went around the circle and we realized, guys and girls, every one of us had been molested at some point as children. And it's upsetting, and it's disturbing. And nobody talks about it. You're not supposed to talk about it. And everybody feels like, oh, maybe it's my fault. And, you know, I, so I want to do this. I want to tell you my story. And then when I tell you my story, maybe that will open things up, and, you can, and people can start conversing about this. Right, I was 13 years old at the time. I um, went to this store near my house. It's uh, called Fuzzle and Co. And I went there to buy graph paper. And I walked in, and I, you know, there's an uncle behind the counter. I said, Uncle, graph paper, there. And he walked out from behind the counter, and he took the graph paper and walked up to me. And I took out the money, and I held out the money, and he took the graph paper, and he took the money from me, and then he reached down and he grabbed me. And I was hurt. I was shocked. I, I was stunned. Bewildered because, see, nobody had ever told me that's how commercial transactions are done. <laughs> you know, so now to this day, I walk out, I walk into a store, and I'm like, here you go. 